Hey, hey, y'all. Happy beginning of a new year. It is now 2022. And as promised, I am back. But um, I miss this. So I'm back doing this. Um, I'm not, even though you can clearly see if you watch any of my videos, I'm definitely in a self-care mode. It is a snow day, baby. So, uh, I did a facial steam. Thank you, my bestie, for buying me a facial steamer because my skin was dry. Looks hydrated now, though. And I'm actually soaking my toes because I'm going to do a pedicure when I get off of this. And then I'm actually going to answer emails. But, um, as promised, I am back. I don't know what the schedule is, all right? I don't know what it is. I'm not going to promise y'all a schedule because I don't know if I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know where God has this leading for me, but uh, I can tell you I am something popped. Um, I'm definitely excited to be back doing it and I'm excited to be focusing in on transparent moments because I love to encourage others. I love people to grow and if you can take a situation that I'm sharing and grow from it, baby, use it, okay? Use it up. Don't use me, use it. All right. Um, but one of the things um, that I had shared initially when I was like, hey, I'm coming back with this was I was going to talk about Egypt and <laughs> it's taken me some time and I'm still like trying to figure this out um, what I want to share. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a snippet. I'm going to talk about my climb of Mount Sinai. Um, it will not be full detailed because I have documented that a bit differently and I am trying to see how I can share that uh, in a grander way with people so you'll hear some of the details look out I will definitely let you know when that comes out something is gonna come out though um, I think it's gonna be something more on the written side so maybe it's like a short story I don't know I don't know I'm excited for whatever it is but uh, that's coming but anyways let's get into it if you have followed me at all, just normal social media, um, and even if you haven't, here you go. Um, at the end of October, I went to Egypt for 13 days. Yes, I went to Egypt during COVID. <laughs> Before this new strand kind of went crazy. I am so thankful that I was able to get out the country um, before, I feel like the rules changed 50,000 more times. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about that, like traveling internationally during COVID. One, know the rules. Know the rules of where you need to come back from, so the USA rules, so you can get back home, and you need to know the rules of the country you're traveling to. Pretty much everybody is in an environment where you wear mask, unless you're in the United States of America, and then states choose. Other countries, everybody's wearing masks, okay? Um, so that was a requirement. Um, there are different testing requirements. There are different vaccination requirements. Um, other countries have different vaccines we haven't even heard of in reference to COVID that they accept or do not. So those are some things that you need to research before you go. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to be doing any type of international travel within like the next two or three months, but I know the game plan for moi is to see Israel uh, hopefully by mid-October of 2022. Israel's rules are crazy though, so I'll let y'all know once I know more, but the plan is to go, so that's what I'm planning to do. Um, but I was able to make it to Egypt. It was like, it was life-changing. Um, definitely my favorite trip thus far. I'm a traveler. If you don't know, now you know. Um, I made Egypt sound so good though that my mother keeps saying that she wants to go there. So, <laughs> you know, it's popping if if my mom wants to go because she don't like to go nowhere. She's not a flyer. She's not a doer in that regard at all. I'm the traveler, baby. Um, so anyways, on the oh end of the trek throughout Egypt was Mount Sinai. And this was something that I looked forward to. This is actually how I got... Uh, how I selected the 13 day trip because it incorporated that because I thought I was going to Israel. It didn't happen last year, given all the rules. And this was something I still got to keep um, in that trip. Uh, Israel was going to be a whole exodus tour. So it was going to take you through Egypt and then through Israel, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to pick up where I left off when I do this next trip. Ah, 
Okay, we're not gonna get into that. I'm gonna share that for the future. Um, so this was really important for me. And it was more than just going to Mount Sinai. For anybody who is confused, Mount Sinai is said to be the mountain where Moses received the Ten Commandments. And I was like, I'm gonna get there, right? So, and it was more than getting there. Like I was going to climb the mountain. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this journey and then I'm really going to um, dive into like the things that were revealed to me by God and not even in those moments, but just like taking time to really think over it, to speak it, to write it. It's a lot. It's a lot and a little bit of time because I got a meeting that's going to start in 15 minutes. <laughs> I got less than 15 minutes with y'all. But um, so the mountain climb. Um, so we get there. There's out of our group of 12 that then went down to 10 um was there were six of us that said we were going to do the climb up the mountain right six and um of the six i was probably the heaviest of the six <laughs> Which I'm fine with, right? Which I'm fine with because my mental be determined. So we start this trek, right? And we're just walking to what is the camel station. Only two of us did the camel station. The other four decided they were going to walk that beginning journey. I walk, We walked like a mile to get there and I was just kind of like, mm, this is going to be some work. So if you can ride a camel for the first hour to hour and a half to cut back on the amount of work, yes, I'm definitely going to take a, a, <laughs> a home court advantage. Like I'm definitely going to take that little jump start. So um, the camel ride was actually really interesting. They were um, one hump camels, which are smaller and they are designed better to do these type of tracks a two hump camel was not going to make it i'm just gonna tell you that they was gonna stop where they were at so we start the journey um at this time i am just comfortably you know sitting on a camel riding up i'm able to take pictures because i don't have to carry my backpack all these things right and you have a camel boy that's what they call them a camel boy and he guides the camel the camels know the journey though but he pretty much guides the camel they chat with you blah blah, blah. it's fun right so once we get to the spot, the drop off spot, guy was wonderful. He took these pictures of me actually on the camel the day that I'm at Mount Sinai. Y'all couldn't even believe I stayed on that camel for an hour and a half. It was crazy. And then I get off, I can barely feel my legs <laughs> because you've been riding on the camel for an hour to an hour and a half. Your legs feel a little bit weird. And then we wait for the rest of the group um, with our guide to start what is now the real journey of this adventure. Um, we start walking and there are some steps, right? And we are, some of us are using our hands to make it easier to get up the steps because they can get a little steep. And I'm thinking, this is the beginning of the 750 steps to the top, right? This is the beginning. And strategically, I'm like, okay, it's not the end of the world. You can do this. You're just gonna have to like, you're gonna have to improvise. So if you need to use your hands, use your hands. If you need to use your knees, use your knees. Whatever you need to do, we get into the top. I won't hold you though. Like throughout this, I'm kind of like, mm, Ruby, <laughs> Ruby. Like this is not you, baby. But this is something I wanted to do. Like it was, it was definitely a goal for me. So we start walking. It's maybe like three fourths of a mile, almost a mile, and we get to the sign. And it says, "Now you will begin your 750 steps." I swear I could have cried at this moment, y'all. And I kind of look back and I'm like, "Wait, so them, that wasn't that wasn't part of the 750? No, no." And now I am looking, right? Like the same way I'm looking now. That's how I'm looking at these stairs. They're not stairs though. They're stones. They're rocky. They're not even. They and these things was work. Not light work. Real work. Work, 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 work. Your girl was over it. They will move. Um, some of them are simple to step up on and some of them are up to your knee level. So you are literally propelling your body onto them. And yeah, it was by the grace of God 
and my guide <laughs> that I made it to the top. It was the hardest thing that I've ever done in my entire life. It is, I have never wanted to quit and achieve something equally as much every step of the way, right? Like usually something will give, right? You'll have a moment where it's like, okay, all right, I can do this. And it was literally every, for every step I took, like woohoo was another moment of like, girl, is you done? Is you finished? Um, there were breakpoints along the journey. And I am going through this very quickly because I'm excited to share this in a whole different way with you, which as I said, I'll share that when it's ready. Um, but I want you to understand some of the background before I go into this transparent moment a bit more. Um, and my guide was the most phenomenal, like I've never experienced a person like him before, ever, in anyone. And that includes my family, my friends, my best friend. Like, though I love them, he supplied something different than I have ever been supplied. And it was amazing. And I'm gonna talk about that. Um, so one of the bummers, it wasn't even really a bummer, but like I think people should know is I didn't make it before sunset. That's the truth. This is when I first made it to the top. I was teary eyed. Proof I actually made it to the top. And then a picture with the group of people that did it with me. I did not make it before sunset. I will say though that the entire group didn't make it before sunset. Um, we just, through due to traffic and security checkpoints and all this stuff, we were like a good 15 minutes behind, right? We were 15 minutes from making it to the top for the sunset. Though we did not make it before sunset, these are just some of the beautiful pictures that I captured along the way. It was gorgeous, y'all. If we would've got there like 30 minutes earlier, we all would've made it to the top before the sunset. Which, in the end, I mean, I ain't gonna hold you. Like, that was the goal. Like, oh, I need to make it to the top. Of but, baby, the, the amount of wins you get throughout the process, like, that becomes so minimal in your mind. I made it to the top. I did something that 99% of the population will never get to do or experience. Um, and that's not a brag, that's a blessing. Um, and I'm grateful for it. I got to experience a peace with God that I never could dream of. Um, I got to learn things about me that I couldn't learn any other way. I got to see glimpses of my husband um, in a way that I needed that I never asked for. I ain't gonna hold you. I, ain't, I did not ask God to be like, show me what I need in a man. That was not the purpose. Um, but he will use any moment as a teachable moment. And that became a very teachable experience for me because I was so open to it, right? Because I wanted, I wanted one thing and that was to make it to the top. And he gave me that and everything else, <laughs> okay? Everything else. Um, so some of the things that I discovered, so like, let me, let me start here. This is where I'm really going to start with the transparent moment. When I got to the bottom of the mountain, the whole trek took about six hours. Yes. Six hours. Now, mind you, I just said we went trying to see the sun set, meaning by the time we got to the mountain, got up the mountain and the sun had set, so it was dark. And you see all these stars twinkling in the sky. I can't even describe it. It'd be like in the movies, but it's real. That's real, y'all. Uh, you just need to get really high to see it that way. Um, but we then had to walk down in the pitch black. So you have lights, sand, and stone together. It makes everything very slippery. So you're really just trying to make sure you don't fall down or off the mountain. But... We made it, I didn't have a scratch on my body, not a concern, my body was sore, but no complaints. Your girl was fine. Shout out to Drench for my hoodie. Um, but when I got to the bottom of the mountain, I recorded a video, a video that I didn't share. And I'll be honest, I don't think I'm gonna share it, um, ever. It was a video that I thought was gonna be a shareable video, and now it's just a video that is very near and dear to my heart. But in that video, I made this comment about like, if my guide was to ask me to marry him, I'd have been married in Egypt, point blank, period. 
and I said it with humor, but it was so serious. Um, I never in life have needed someone. This experience showed me that. Um, I've never needed someone. Like, yes, your parents on the onset, um, and even my life story beginning out, like, those two didn't work out, so God gave me another two. That's kind of just, I'm going to leave it at that. Those the original two didn't work, so God gave me another two. Um, so probably there, there was a need. Um, but it wasn't the same need. I didn't know I needed them. They were just always present. So when somebody is always present, you don't always know it's a need. You know it, they're a supplier. Um, they are our support system. But when I was doing this journey, I learned very quickly like that I needed this guide. Um, and yes, it was his job to take us up the mountain, but his job was not to be like a water boy. His job was not to be um, my personal um, weight like to use to push myself up. His job was not to carry all of my items. His job was not to make sure that my items stayed safe. Like none of those things are a part of his job. His job is to take you up, not to support you through, right? And my guide took me up, supported me through, got me through with, he, he's everything I needed and some, okay? I, I never knew. Um, so that was the first time I needed someone. And it also taught me, about me right because i'm not like your surrender submissive person like you just don't see that initially in me i mean it's there i've learned that clearly through this journey but i learned very quickly that i was going to have to surrender it all to this man um, I was going to have to surrender the plan. I was going to have to surrender my trust, my belongings. Um, when I say my belongings in my bag, I probably had like three grand worth of stuff. I had my passport, which was going to be the thing that was going to get me home. Um, I had my iPhone in there, brand new iPhone. Um, I had my brand new camera and two lenses that I had just bought for specifically for this venture. Cameras, we're not going to talk about how much I spent on cameras, but that that's, don't worry about it. Um, so, and I had money in there and I literally just handed it over to a stranger because I needed his help. Like I couldn't carry this and carry me up. And he knew that. So he was willing to take as much of the load as I was willing to give him. But that requires me to surrender. How much am I load am I willing to give you so you can help the both of us get to the top? Right? That was big for me. Cause I don't lean on people. I'm learning to lean on the Lord. Okay. So I don't lean on people. Um, but I learned so much. And not only that, like I saw so many things like people would be like, what do you need in a man? Right? That's always a question. And in my mind, like, I didn't know if I had a list of needs. I have wants for sure. For sure. I got wants. Um, but I have like, in my, like, I don't need you. I want you in my life, but I don't need you. Like I was one of those people. Um, and now I have things that are very specific that I incorporate in the prayer for the person that God brings into my life, right? Um, and I'm going to share a couple of things with you that I have learned. So it will hopefully make your mind think a little bit differently, right? We get very caught up in worldly things. Like I want him to be tired, taller than six feet. That's a want. <laughs> That's a want. Um, I want his chemistry to match my chemistry and y'all can use your imagination for what else I'm talking about because I'm not gonna say those words but if you know you know um I want somebody that is driven um I want somebody that is really goal oriented and grinding with me and we're building the empire these are wants though right like the reality is what are your needs um if you stripped all of that away how could this person be there for you, right? And these were some of the things that um, I noticed in this person that I said, if they asked me to marry them, I would say yes. And I've never said that about anybody, period. Point blank, period, right? Um, so I'm gonna share them. Um, he was patient, he was caring, he was kind, he was supportive, 
He was a load bearer. Um, he could bear my weight and his. That's important, right? Extremely important, probably far more important than people realize. Um, he was a support system. He was mentally and physically strong. And I say that he was physically strong because I know I weighed more than this man. I, period. I know how much I weigh. I can rough estimate um, for other people because my weight is hidden. So I usually know like, mm, yeah, all right, this is what I can give you. So I know I weighed more than him and he bore his weight and mine multiple times throughout the journey. Um, and he was mentally strong in a way that blew my mind. It was almost like he could read my mind at moments to know when I was having those cracks and those doubts to say, and he said to me, do you promise to keep trying? He literally said this to me, do you promise to keep trying? And I said, yeah. And he said, then I promise to get you to the top. And the way he said it to me, he was so sure. Not even he was so sure in my ability. He was sure in his ability to get us there as long as I was willing to keep going, right? So it was like he set this partnership. I don't even know if he knew he was doing these things, but he set this partnership. And not only did he set the partnership, he made a promise. And when that was done, I literally looked at this man and I was like, whoa, you promised me something. And because I kept my promise, you kept yours. And I don't, I can't point one of y'all out in, in the past, no offense to anybody, that has, has done that. No, no. So he gave me like a renewed faith in men. <laughs> that sounds really funny, but I'm being honest. Like I have to be honest with what this journey did for me he gave me a renewed faith because like he has me looking at y'all a bit differently. And it's like, not all of y'all will be him, but some of y'all are him. And kudos to you, kudos to everybody that makes a promise and keeps a promise because you don't know what that means to a woman, but it means the world. So to have somebody who is a stranger provide that, like I only, like I don't even know, but I know what God has in store for me. And I'm excited, right? I'm ecstatic about it. Um, but well, I was on the list, a caring, attentive, um, being able to communicate, knowing when to pause right like this man knew when i had had enough he knew when i needed a break he gave me water and gave me a second to breathe right he was there without being stifling he was supportive without being pushy maybe that's my husband god if that's my husband bring him back because i can i can point him out in the crowd damn sure could do that for sure without a doubt um and and lastly, the last thing I wrote on here um, was he was willing to take the journey with me and he was willing to lead me when I needed direction. Um, and this also showed me like the way in which I trusted in him, I need to trust in the Lord. So that's always the first Thing. Oh, yeah, and, and his, he has to have a relationship with God. So that was where we was going to have some issues because he was Muslim. Um, yes. <laughs> so that would have been like the issue point for us um, because I'm not, but everything else, he was great. And it just, it was amazing. It was eye-opening. It was something I needed at that point in my life. It was more than I could dream or ask for, but that's God, right? All these things that I'm saying are literally how people describe God and what he provides. So him just providing this experience for me has me one, excited for everything else that's to come. Um, and two, has really opened my eyes to one, you, you do need things in life like I need God I need others um I need to be submissive I need to surrender um and sometimes he will force your hand so you can really see how you fare in those situations 
And it also showed me that I can, right? I can happily. I can happily. It's possible. Um, but that is my journey of my Mount Sinai mountain adventure. I just want to supply some additional pictures of the experience, the beauty, the struggle. Um, would I do it again? Baby, I don't know. Was it worth every moment? For sure. Um, I look forward to more transparent moments with you guys. Um, just sharing and just sharing life, I guess. I will see you when I see you. And I also look forward to sharing this story in a different way, in a written way. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a written way. Um, and you guys will be the first people to know. Um, and share this video with somebody else. Hopefully it inspires you a bit to do your own little journey. Or, I mean, I'll say this. I didn't ask God to show me this. I didn't ask God for some big reveal. Um, this was needed in this time. I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know if I got something coming my way. I mean, I always got something coming my way. Um, <laughs> but I don't know fully what that means, but I look forward to finding out. Um, so ask him to start revealing some things to you or ask him just to open your eyes to the experiences around you. Cause that's all I wanted. Like I wanted an experience and I got far more than I could ever put in words. Um, but yeah, so it was great sitting and chatting with you guys. I look forward to doing this all of 2022.